Hi, welcome to Oil and Grease on our new HydroFlow manifold. First, a little bit about the manifold. This is far superior to anything we've had before and you've probably used before in that you have total control over the vacuum flow with this manifold. You have gross flow adjustment here and then fine adjustment here. Also, this is great because it segregates our waste. Our aqueous waste can go here and our solvent waste can go here. And of course, our samples are collected here. And this fits all of our universal cartridges right on top. No bottle holder needed. First, we need to take our universal cartridge since we're doing oil and grease EPA method 1664. And we're going to pre-rinse all of our cartridges with hexane. We had about 10 milliliters of hexane. And we're going to let this sit for about five minutes make sure we get an absolutely clean blank and then we're going to collect that in our organic waste and then let it dry for a few minutes so i'm going to switch that over to waste over here i have this selector set on organic i have the vacuum pressure turned on for waste and here i'm going to turn the fine control all the way to waste flow full vacuum Okay, we've had our hexane drying now. This is our initial hexane rinse. I'm going to turn our vacuum flow back to the off position. We can add our bottle holder to each cartridge. And now, now we're going to add about 10 milliliters of methanol to each cartridge to condition the cartridge. We'll let that soak for about a minute and then pull most of that to waste. I'm just going to turn this on low to pull it to waste. Here we go. Now this one. This one. And this one. All right, now we need to equilibrate with some DI water to get all the methanol out. So I'm going to add around 10 milliliters of water to each one. Now I'm going to pull some water through, but I'm not going to let the cartridge dry. Turning it to medium. Turn that off. And now we're ready to add our samples. Some points about oil and grease. Make sure that your, your standard uh, has, is in solution and otherwise your steric acid can fall out of solution and you'll see it floating in the, in the standard bottle. If that's the case, you'll need to sonicate it to get the steric acid back in solution. That's a common mistake that I see in the laboratory. Also, your samples have to be pH adjusted to pH two or less. It's critical, it's required by the method. It won't work unless the pH is two or less. If you're, be sure to check anything with deionized water, such as a method blank or a spiked blank, with your pH meter, because as you know, you can't uh, test conductivity in water that has no ions. You can use your pH paper for real samples or tap water, but the meter has to be used for DI water. So first thing we're going to do is add our samples to each cartridge. These are one liter samples in a Boston round bottle. Just flip it over like that. Don't worry, these bottles will not fall out. 
They are earthquake tested. Now we're going to move our selector over here off of uh, organic and onto aqueous. Then we're going to make sure that our elution flow is, is, is still turned off, but our waste flow is turned on. And then we're going to send these to aqueous waste because we're collecting the hexane extractable materials from the water. With this method, you can turn it up all the way to full waste flow. And we're going to let it pour through the, the cartridge. Well, now all of, all of our samples drain through to waste and all of the HEM is captured on our C18. So now we have to go into the drying phase to make sure that that C18 gets dry before elution. As you know, hexane uh, is repelled by water, so if our cartridges are still wet, then the hexane will not be able to uh, get to the C18 and remove the HEM, and you won't have any recovery. So we're going to remove the bottles, get those out of the way for right now. And this is something that I recommend with our cartridges because we have the integrated pre-filter in these, which stays wet. So I put some sodium sulfate right on top of that pre-filter to absorb any moisture that's in there. You don't have to measure it, just cover that pre-filter. And this will greatly increase the, the, or, or decrease your amount of drying time, time you need to pull vacuum through your cartridge. This is especially important in humid areas like the south or southeast where uh, it's always humid. It's much harder to, to dry a cartridge under those conditions. Up in northern Alaska or Canada, it dries very quickly in the wintertime. Now we're going to give it uh, 10 minutes to draw vacuum and then we'll start our elution process. Okay, we've let vacuum uh, pull through our cartridges for about 10 minutes, got all the water out, and now it's time for elution. I went ahead and added the hexane to our sample bottles and swirled it around there really good to make sure we got everything off the glass because it will stick to the glass. And then it's just a matter of adding our hexane into the cartridge. I'm going to turn, make sure I turn the vacuum flow off and I'm going to turn the main valve off so that uh, we're able to collect our organic. So I'll turn this. All right, so let's add the first one. Now we want to let these sit for about five minutes just to make sure if there's any moisture left around that C18 that our hexane can get to it and pull all of our analytes off of the C18. Well, we've let all of our cartridges sit with hexane in them for five minutes, and now it's just a matter of, of capturing the hexane. So we switch over to elution flow. Any speed you like, it doesn't matter with this because it's been soaking for five minutes. So I'm just going to turn them on somewhere and collect the hexane. And it's just that simple. We're going to repeat this procedure three more times, and then we'll be ready for the sodium sulfate drying step. We're just going to send the hexane with the HEM materials through sodium sulfate. We're going to rinse the sodium sulfate to make sure we get it all out into a teared vial, take that to dryness using our nitrogen evaporator, and then take the mass and write down the final result. And that's oil and grease in a nutshell. Any questions, please let us know. We're here to help you. Thank you.